In today's video, we're gonna have a look at mixing female pop vocals. I'm gonna take you through all the processing that I used on Chelsea's voice in this country pop song. So let's have a quick listen to the track and then I'll take you through all of that stuff. Why do I keep going there? I thought I said I didn't care. So you can hear the raw vocal sounds pretty solid and it's a pretty good tone that we captured and the actual EQ of the mic suits her voice really well. So the mic that we used on her voice for this performance was the Lawton Audio FC387 in the F mode, which is like a nice bright forward sounding mode on the mic. Personally, I think that mic is amazing on vocals, especially in the F mode. So when we compare the raw vocal to the processed vocal, the things we notice that the, the raw vocal is a little bit inconsistent dynamically. Um, it kind of pops in and out of the mix. It's almost there, but some words just start to disappear and some come a little too forward. It's hard to find that sweet spot for it just at the moment. Even though I did track with some opto compression, so I used the AudioScape opto on that, which is like a LA-2A clone. Um, so it's already sounding pretty nice. We've got a nice vocal tone, we've got a little bit of compression, but we need to just squeeze this a little bit more to get it sitting in that dynamic range where it's just sitting on top of the mix where we can hear every word nice and clear because it's pretty important with pop stuff to be able to hear the words and that the vocal is our focus point. So let's run through the processing to get this vocal sitting up front of the mix and sounding nice. So from the references that I was using while mixing, I needed to get the vocal to a point where it was warm but bright. So we need that vocal to have clarity but we don't want it to sound harsh at the same time. So let's run through it. Here is our lead vocal. So first things first, I've just done a little bit of DSing. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission. So we're using the FabFilter Pro and B as a DSer here, and I've gone for a bell shape, just attacking some of these sort of frequencies around 7K here. So you can use any DSer really, but with the Pro and B, you can kind of set this up and shape it however you want. So I've just made a bell here, fast attack, fast release, and then about six dBs of gain reduction. And then we just play with the threshold to get it reacting to this band here. So we've got it in free mode, which let us set the band that's gonna trigger the compression. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. So tackling some of that high frequency nasty stuff in the, the S and T sounds. Next thing, little bit of EQ. So I'm following this up with just the Logic stock EQ here. We've just got a high pass filter, taking out some of the rumbly low end. And then we have a little bit of a bell around 232 Hertz, just taking out some of that low end that sort of makes the vocal a little undefined. It's also like where you would find a bit of warmth in the vocal, but a little too much can make the vocal be unclear and lose its clarity. So pretty much we just have like a 3 dB cut there at 232 hertz and then a little cut around 9.5, 10K area. So obviously just getting a little, tackling a little bit of that bright stuff where it's just maybe getting a little bit harsh sounding. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving, knowing how far back that would set me. Why do I keep going there? I thought I said it didn't care. So nothing too crazy going on there. Especially once we add a little bit of compression after this, a little bit of that low end's actually gonna come back into it. So dealing with a little bit of that build up now is gonna help just level it out a little bit when we push it into the compressor. Following that up with a pull tech. So basically Chelsea's voice um, is really nice and it has like a really smooth quality about it. And this song ended up being quite big and we needed her voice to cut through the mix nicely. So looking to add a little bit of, I guess, like saturation and with the, the pool tech, you get a little bit of that tube color straight up when you just put this plug in on. So this is the UAD um, EQP 1A. Kind of a bit of a love-hate relationship with this one. Sometimes I think it sounds great and sometimes I think it's a little grainy. Um, probably depends on the vocalist if you're going to try this on them, but it worked pretty well on Chelsea's voice. So all we got here is like a tiny boost at 16K. So we're just bringing in a little bit of air in that really 
upper air band kind of thing. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. And it's a sharp band, so that means it's not going to be like a a really long curve into the EQ. It's just going to be like a really sharp lift around that frequency. And that's about it on that. So we're just adding some color. So we turn this on and off. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving, knowing how far back that would set me. It's super subtle, right? But it does add like almost a kind of compression to the sound because it's getting, giving it that like tubey sound. Anyway, it's subtle, but it's there. So the next thing, some compression. I generally do a slower attack on vocals, but for this song, I was feeling fast attack, fast release on the vocals. So it just goes to show that every song's a little different. Every vocal should be approached a little differently. You shouldn't just slap presets on and be like, this is how I mix it every time. I'm trying to think now with the reasoning why I went for a fast attack and fast release. Generally, I'll do this if I'm trying to deal with a bit of bright sibilance. The fast attack lets the compressor grab those sibilances straight away. Whereas if you have a slow attack, you get a real punchy vocal, but your T's and S's get through that attack first, and then you have to deal with a bit of extra DSing later, which I, I still probably do, but it can make them really jump out of the mix. And if the vocal already has a lot of like bright sibilance, it can get pretty nasty pretty quick. So that's why I've got the fast attack, fast release here. Let's have a quick listen to this. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. So you can hear that's thickening the vocal up. Yeah, it's a little bit louder, but it's thickening the vocal up and it's, it's not letting those T's and S's jump through too much. I like to use the UAD 1176 Rev E and the Rev E adds a bit of like thickness and warmth to the sound. So that's kind of why I reached for that one as well. So we're just like making that vocal nice and thick and punchy and we're controlling the dynamics a lot there with that fast attack and fast release. So we're kind of just squeezing this last little bit of dynamics out of the vocal to help it sit in that spot where we can hear it all nice and clear. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. Cool, starting to sound pretty cool. So then we're following that up with a second round of DSing around the same spot. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving. A little bit less this time. So we've got about three dBs of gain reduction there. So after a bit of compression, you tend to need maybe a little bit extra de-essing. Follow this up with another little EQ. So this one here, I probably loaded this EQ up a little bit later in the mix, finding some just frequencies that were maybe causing a little bit of masking between the vocals and the instruments and just helping clean the vocal up just a little bit more to sit in the mix nicely. So we've got a one dB cut at 370 hertz, so probably just a little bit of low mid muddiness. It was sort of conflicting in the mix. And then at 1080 hertz, a little dip, minus two dBs just here. So let's have a listen to that. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving, knowing how far back that would set me. That's sort of a, a region in vocals around 300, 400 hertz that can get pretty muddy. Um, so that's why just a little notch there, I think has probably helped this vocal to sit in the mix a bit better. And then we're just gonna follow this up with a tiny little bit of chorus. Something I like to do on vocals, I don't know if a lot of people do this, but I just put a teeny tiny bit of chorus on the lead vocal. So mono to stereo, and it's just, yeah, pretty much these settings. I just kind of have this set up as a default. And when I wanna use this on a vocal, I just load it up. Just adds like a little little bit of stereo width to the vocal. It's pretty subtle, but I think it also helps chill out some of the, the harshness in the vocal sometimes too. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving, knowing how far back that would set me. No, even six, 7% sounds pretty nice there. So that's nearly everything there, but there's one more plugin that we're using on the actual vocal bus that all the vocals are being sent to. And this is kind of like the icing on the cake here. So I'm using a plugin by Baby Audio called Smooth Operator. It's basically kind of like Soothe, really. It just focuses in on resonances and compresses any of those resonant peaks that kind of jump past the threshold that you set and clamps down on them. So it's really good for containing like harsh frequencies or like if you have a buildup, you can use this to kind of like rein it in a little bit. Obviously like a little goes a long way. You gotta be pretty careful with these plugins because things can start to get 
a bit weird if you go too heavy handed on them. So let me show you what this plugin is doing to our vocal. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission, giving, knowing how far back that would set me. So this thing is really reining in any of the harshness in the top high end frequencies here. So we're getting a little bit of de-essing going on up here, a little bit of stuff around that three to five, seven K. It's getting compressed a little bit if it's getting a little too forward in the mix, it's clamping down on it. And as well in that kind of muddy region, the 200, 300, 400 area, where just anything that gets a little too warm and upfront, it's just pushing it down a little bit. And it's just making this vocal sound a lot more consistent in tone. So all of our double tracks, harmonies, and all of that stuff are being sent into this as well. Let's have a quick listen to the chorus. Keep going there. So as you can see, it was really the top end that Smooth Operator was really kind of reining in on through the mix. And like when all the vocals are pushed together into that bus, um, it builds up a little bit more, like all those harsher frequencies. And this plugin starts to just rein that stuff in and make the overall full vocal sound a lot nicer. And that's about it, guys. So take away what you want from this and just know that every vocal is a little different. If the vocal we were working on was already quite airy and bright, maybe we wouldn't add any airiness to the vocal. Or if it was sounding thin, we wouldn't take away that low end in the EQ. We would probably attack more of the top end or use like a multi-band compressor on the top end of the vocal to rein it in and make it sound a bit warmer. So there's lots of different ways to approach vocals but you just have to listen to the raw sound, visualize where you want to take that vocal. Like what does that vocal need to sound the way that you want it to sound in the mix? And then you start going for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Making bad decisions, giving myself permission.